Yeah. Welcome everybody, and we're going to do uh, the Torah reading. Continue to read the Torah reading. We have is uh, this. This day is uh, Exodus six. Uh, Exodus one one to six one, and we're reading Exodus four. We read Exodus. Exodus three yesterday, which is really powerful. May I just continue to open up our eyes about this. And we're going to see something here again uh, as we read. So, and Moses answered. So we, we left off in chapter three. We left off where Yahweh was using Moses in a very special way. And Yah told Moses to go to the Pharaoh of Egypt and tell him what would happen. And he also mentioned and told him exactly what was going to happen with the women of Israel. So ask the neighbor, the Egyptians, and the stranger in a house, articles of silver, articles of gold and garments. That they'll plunder Egypt on the way out. And all this came to, tr to truth later on. But at the time, Moses didn't understand. He was, he was kind of worried. He heard all this stuff that was being said, and he was worried. He's like, whoa, that's like somebody telling us, you know, you're chosen. You go to ISIS, and you speak to the leader of ISIS. And you tell those, the slaves of ISIS, those that are captured, to, that you were going to set them free. It's like, wait a second. You want to use me to do that? And we start off chapter 4. And Moses answered and said, and behold, they will not believe me and will not listen to my voice. For they will say, Yah has not appeared to you. Now, this isn't even Pharaoh. He's talking about the children of Israel will not believe. I mean, remember, when he last left Egypt, he left because the children of Israel were saying, what are you going to do to us? You're going to kill us the way you killed that Egyptian? You know, and they, 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 it wasn't only Egypt that the reason he fled, it was also Israel, the way they were talking to him. So now he's asked to go back and to take them out. He says, Yah, they're not going to listen to me. In verse two, and Yah said to him, what is in your hand? And he said, a staff. And he said, throw it to the ground, and he threw it to the ground, and it became a hissing creature, and Moses fled from its face. So let's look at the word hissing creature here, because I know some common translations will say it became a snake. It wasn't a snake. It became a hissing creature. and. I'm looking at these other translations. Some say it's a lizard. Some would have said it was a some sort of uh, lizard type animal. But a snake is has been rendered in many of the translations of that not being the truth of what it was. So I look through some of the translations here. I see what uh, they give instead. We're looking at chapter 4 of Exodus, verse 3. You see what these translations says? Uh, one translation here says it became a serpent. A serpent. And this one here says, and it became a snake. And then... And then we have this one here, and it says snake as well. But in looking at the many, many notes on this topic, uh, it, it was most likely, I believe, from the study I'd done previously, and you can see it on my website, a, 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 a lizard of some sort. And Yah said to Moses, verse 4, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he sent 
out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his palm. Wow. Wow. So that they may believe, Yah, the Elo of their fathers, has appeared to you, the Elo of Abraham, the Elo of Isaac, and the Elo of Jacob. And Yah said to him again, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And he brought it out, and behold, his hand was a lep as leprous as snow. And he said, put your hand back into your bosom. And he put his hand back into his bosom. And he brought it out from his bosom. And behold, it had returned like flesh. Now, this is the convincing right now of, of, of Moshe, of Moses. Yah was showing him the great power he could do through him. And this shows all of us this. And then they're going to prepare to go for, for, before Pharaoh. When you see all these things that men do out there today in the name of Yah, you know, there, there, are, there are some wicked people dabbling in some wicked things that might try to make that appearance that they're doing in the name of Yah, but they're not. But when they are, it just shows how the power that Yah has to work through his people. And, and we can't worship the person doing it. We have to praise Yah for using that person to do it. And Yah can do that for all of us. For all of us. The only special power that Moses had was the deep love and heart for Yah, that Yah would use him and trust him that it would be done. Even though the human part of Moses didn't want to do this, and he was, he, he was concerned greatly. But Yah said, we're going to have this meeting here. We're going to have a meeting. You know, there's a lot of things my, my children and I, as my children are getting older in the world, as we as we don't agree with things, but I could sit down and talk to them and give them example after example, and they're going to have the choice to to follow me or or not or to take my advice or not. You know, and Yahweh does that with us. He speaks to us and he shows us. And this is what he was doing with Moses. He had a talk with him. He said, Moses said, and they're not going to listen to me. And Yah said, I'm going to talk to you. Look, throw your staff on the ground. Look, put your hand in your bosom. And look at these things that happened. And, uh, and Moses still had an opportunity to say, no, I'm not going anywhere. But eventually we got to answer the call. And he did. In verse 5, so that they may believe that Yah, the Elo of their fathers, has appeared to you. The Elo of Abraham, Elo of Isaac, and Elo of Jacob. So they believe, so, 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 so this was Yah telling Moses, these were the things you're going to do so that they may believe. All right. Then we, uh, verse eight, and it shall be if they will not believe you, and will not listen to the voice of the first sign, they will believe the latter sign. And it shall be if they will not believe these two signs also, it will, uh, and will not listen to your voice, you shall take the water of the Nile and pour it on the dry land. And the water which you take from the Nile shall become blood on the dry land. Now, What's so interesting is this is Moses had said, Behold, they will not believe me and will not listen to my voice, for they will say, Yah has not appeared to you. But who is he talking about? You know, was he talking about Pharaoh or was he talking about the children of Israel? And who are these signs for? It's for both of them.
That's what we see here. And now he's saying, you'll take water out of the, the Nile. Where, remember, the babies were being thrown into the Nile, be killed, where Moses survived that. This was a river of blood. This was the true revelation. This is a powerful one. That the truth be revealed about this, this, this river of blood. You'll take water out of it and put it on the land and it will become blood on the land. Now we're talking about blood. Now we're talking about the blood of the innocent children. Now we're seeing something powerful. But Yah says in Genesis, the blood is his. And Moses said to Yah, oh Yah, I am not a man of words, either from yesterday or from the third or, or, or the third day, nor since you have been speaking to your bond slave. For I am heavy of mouth and heavy of tongue. Basically, Moses had a stuttering issue. And the thing here is, and the question is, did he have a stuttering issue? Did this arise out of the fear that he had? Was he well-spoken before this time? Because it never mentioned anything in scripture about this before. Was he so paralyzed with fear about going forward that is, he couldn't even send out a word straight? No, never before did it mention that he was being raised by the Egyptian daughter, the king's daughter, that he had a stuttering issue. Never was it mentioned that they make fun of him when they, they said, what are you going to do? Kill us the way you killed that other person or nothing. But here Moses is giving excuses or reasons why he can't do these things after even Yah told him to do these things. And verse 11. Now we're going to spend some time in verse 11 here. Verse 11. And Yah said to him, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb or the deaf? On seeing or, or, or seeing or the blind. Is it not I, Yah? Well, let's look at that there because we've been saying Yah and we see the words in scriptures and it, it, we're looking at the word that we spoke yesterday about the name. Is it not I, Yah? There's, there's many, many places in scripture in the original text where the name was replaced. And in many scriptures, it'll use the word Lord or something like that in that, in that translation. So let's, uh, let's look at uh, Exodus 4.11. 4.11 here says, And the Lord said to him, Who made man's mouth? Or who made the name of the deaf? Or the seeing on the blind? Is it not I am the Lord? So this is the, the, the translation we were reading yesterday about I am, the I am, the Anakia. Is it not the, the, the I am? But they still use the word Lord. The I am the Lord. And I have another translation here. It says, and Yah said to him, who has made man's mouth or who makes a man dumb or deaf or seeing or blind it is not i and this here says uh says yah is it not i yah and we see here how certain texts have changed this in 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 134 places where uh, it reads, or the Mesoratic text, which the, the text of scripture reads, uh, Adonai, which is an a, a understandable transformation of, of, of the name and the attempt to take the name out. And it wasn't always a bad intention to take the name out. But the problem is today, Adonai being a decent uh, substitute for it, today it's been transformed to uh, God or Lord or something like this. And when we look at the name of other pagan deities, we see an issue with uh, with those titles. So we have to keep that in mind there. 
And then we continue to read verse 12. So he tells Moses, this is, this is powerful. This is, this going back to 11 is powerful. And he said to him, who has made man's mouth? Who makes the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Is it not I? So Yahweh is the creator of all things. Of all things. And we need to remember this. He's in control of everything. The creator of everything. Life and death. Remember the words of Job that said he giveth and he taketh away. And we don't know his reasoning or these things, but it says who has made, or we can say who has allowed these things. The, 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 the blind, the mouth, and all the things of, 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 of creation. But specifically here, it's interesting that he says, who has made man's mouth? Here, remember, just we read a couple of verses ago, Moses saying, I, I can't speak. I have, a, I have a stuttering issue. And Yah says, who has made your mouth? Who has made man's mouth? And he's saying this to a man who has a stuttering issue. Who made your mouth? Or who makes the dumb or the deaf? Seeing or the blind? Is it not I, Yah? And then he tells Moses in verse 12, now go and I will be with your mouth and I will teach you what you shall speak. Oh, wow. I mean, that'd be a prayer lifted up for all of us for Yah's words to come out of our mouth. Yah would be with him. And he said, oh, Yah, please send the hand of him whom you will send. And the anger of Yah glowed, uh, glowed against Moses. And he said, do I not know your brother Aaron, the Levite, that he can speak well? And behold, he also is coming out to meet you. And he will see you and be glad in his heart. Wow. Wow. Here, Moses is still not sure about the, his stuttering issue, his so-called issue here. He says, please help me here. And Yah, in anger, glowed against Moses. We haven't seen that too much in the scriptures, his anger against Moses, and he said, do I not know your brother, Aaron the Levite? So here, the first time we're hearing of, of the brother of Moses, Aaron the Levite, your brother, Aaron the Levite. So this is, well, we already know that Moses was born to the Levite par parents, but he said, I want to highlight that here. Do I not know you, brother Aaron, the Levite, that he can speak well? And you shall speak to him, and you shall put the words, uh, put the word in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth, and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. Now this is so important because. If Yah was going to use Aaron, why did he need Moses? Moses was the chosen one by Yah for a reason. And Aaron here was going to be his helper. His helper. He didn't just throw Moses to the side and say, okay, Aaron's going to be the one next one up here to, to do this. He was going to use Moses mightily. Mightily. And remember, up to this point in scripture, we had Yah speaking to, to Noah. We had Yahweh speaking to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And he asked all of them to do things that, 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 that didn't make man feel comfortable. Building an ark, 
going out of your land, away from your family. And it's Isaac and Jacob, things started to come a little bit more realistic when he saw what was done through there. At least they had examples of, of Yah speaking to, to Noah and, and Abraham and how it's panned out here. And now he's going to use Moses and Aaron. And verse 16, and he shall speak for you to the people. And he shall, and it shall be, he shall be a mouth for you and you shall be a mighty one for him. So we're going to look at the, the word here in the note here. It says you shall be a mighty one. It says here in the note for this. The Hebrew word used here is Elohim, a generic term for deity. And the title is used for Yah around 2,500 times in scripture. And with Yah's great power behind Moses, he would look as if he were an Elohim to Aaron. Now, some translations today might say you may be a God or you may be Lord to him or something like this, but the generic term Elohim does, is more appropriate because uh, the word God and Lord are, 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 are duplications of, of names of deities that we should not have on our, our lips. And uh, so it says mighty one. And you shall take this staff in your hand by which you do these signs. And Moses went and returned to his father-in-law Jethro and said to him, please let me go and return to my brothers who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. Now, we see here the type of person Moses was and the respect that Moses had for his father-in-law and for authority. And it would have been very interesting if Moses, his father-in-law said, no, do not leave. You have a daughter here. You have a responsibility here. I don't care who spoke to you. You're staying right here. But that didn't happen. So we don't have to speculate what would have went on in that case. But the point is, Moses respectfully asked him to be released and to go. And he said to go in peace. And verse 19, and Yah said to Moses and Midian, go, return to Egypt, for the men are dead, those seeking your life. Well, he gave him these instructions. And my Call to everyone here today is when Yahweh gives you the word, the instructions to do something, are you going to listen or are you going to delay it? Are you going to look for every excuse not to do it? Oh, my mouth. Oh, my father. All these things. Or are you going to get up and go and do what he calls you to do? To do what he calls you to do. No matter how backwards it might seem according to this world, if Yah tells you to do something, get up and do it. Verse 20, and Moses took his wife and his sons and made them ride on a donkey. And he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the staff of Elohim in his hand. Now, a donkey here is a sign of humility, but it says Moses took his wife and his sons and made them ride on a donkey. As far as I know, they didn't go with him. If I remember, we'll see if I'm incorrect, but they didn't go with him. So where'd they go and ride? I want to see what the, if any of the other translations has for 420 and what they would say.
It says here in this translation, and Moses took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey. And he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the staff of Yah in his hand. So this one says, made them ride on a donkey. And this one says, set them on a donkey. And then so for 420 in this translation, it says, and Moses took his wife and sons and set them upon, we'll say donkey here, they use a different word. And he returned to the land of Egypt. It says he returned, it didn't say they, so he returned to the land of Egypt. And he took the rod of Yah in his hand. Okay, so he comes back alone. Verse 21. And Yah said to Moses, as you go to return to Egypt, see all your wonders which I have put in your hand and do them before Pharaoh. And I will harden his heart and he will not send the people away. Now, this is really important to understand because we come together here for prayer every day. Prayer is, is speaking to Yah, is being in communication with Yahweh. And do you see the dialogue that that Moses had with Yahweh. He consistently was in communication with him, talking to him, praying along the way, always in prayer. Yahweh said, Yahweh said, Moses heard, Moses heard. And back then, he, he couldn't sit down and just read the word and hear Yah speak. But Yah was speaking directly to him because he was speaking directly to Yah. It's important to understand this and see that. Verse 21, and Yah said to Moses, he told him what happened as you go. He told him along the way what was going to happen. And you shall speak to Pharaoh. So says Yah, my son, the firstborn is Israel. And I said to you, send my son away and let him serve me. And you refuse to send him. Behold, I am about to kill your son. Your firstborn. So we'll look at that here. In this, in this note for that in verse 23, it says, it was decided back when Noah and Abraham that salvation would come out of the seed of Israel, who is the firstborn to Yah. We're going to read that and look at that again. And you shall speak to Pharaoh, says Yah, my son. So says Yah, speak to Pharaoh. So says Yah, my son, the firstborn of Israel. And I said to you, send my son away and let him serve me. And you refuse to send him. Behold, I am, the I am about to kill your son, your firstborn. And then 24 says, and it happened. On the way, in the lodging place, Yah met him and sought to kill him. So we're going to look at this a little bit more closely here. In the other translations, and look at what they're saying here in 423. 423. And whenever you read a scripture, if you want to find out exactly what's going on, you know, if you can't understand it or clear, get a clear understanding in one translation, Pick up another translation. And, uh, and you tell Pharaoh, thus says Yah, Israel is my son, my firstborn. And I say to you, send my son away. For Moses to tell Pharaoh, send Israel away. So he can serve me. And if you refuse to send him out, behold, I am. The I am, the Anoki, will send your son or will slay your son, your firstborn. The note here says it's an excellent note. Pharaoh knew up front what would happen if he would not let Israel go. He was told up front. And it happened on the way at the lodging place that. Yah met him and sought to kill him. 
So we see that. So let's look at the verse 23 and 4 here in this translation. I have said unto you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And you have refused to let him go. Behold, I will slay you and your firstborn. And it came to pass on the way at the lodging place that Yah met him and sought to kill him. So now we go to verse. Powerful stuff here. 25. And Zipporah took a stone and cut off her son's foreskin and caused it to touch his feet. And she said, you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So what is going on here? So now Sephora, his wife, was with him, was with him. You were of blood to me. And he pulled back from him. Then she said, a bridegroom of blood for the circumcision. Verses 24 to 26, Yahweh's judicial order was that Moses' son should have been circumcised. Elohim had mercy to spare the boy. However, Zipporah did not understand the covenant being a mandate, or, 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 or a man, uh, the covenant being a mandate. And uh, we see here she's with him, and we're looking at covenant here. And Zipporah took a stone and cut off her son's foreskin and caused it to touch his feet. And she said, you are a bridegroom of blood to me. And he pulled back from him. Then she said, a bridegroom of blood for this circumcision. So let's look at uh, 425 here. Some of these other translations. So we don't over miss what's going on here. Then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut the foreskin of her son, casting it at his feet saying, surely you are a bloody husband to me so he let him be then she said you are a bloody husband because of the circumcision this is talking about the covenant that y'all made that a male should be circumcised which hadn't been done at this point until Sephora went and did it so at this point she was still with them and i have another translation that has it in in in, in the correct order we should look at that uh, another day and see the order of where this was and the timing of this. Because uh, when Moses went back, she wasn't with him at some point. So it says here, then Tepora took a flint and cut off the foreskin of his son and cast it at his feet. And she said, surely a bridegroom of blood you are to me. So he let him alone. Then she said, a bridegroom of blood in regard to the circumcision. Let me see here. In verse 27, and Yah said to Aaron, go in the wilderness to meet Moses. So when we looked at here, what he was going to say to the king about Let's go back here a few verses. So in verse 21, Yah said to Moses, as you go to return to Egypt, see all your uh, wonders which I have put. So he's saying this, you shall speak to uh, Pharaoh and tell him about his son and, and he would be put to death. So Moses had not yet even met Aaron yet up to this point. So he had not gone back, but Pharaoh had knew everything that was going to happen. And then we look at the, the incident here with the covenant that was made and, and, and Zipporah finally did it. And Yah said to Aaron, go in the wilderness to meet Moses. Now, this is an amazing thing here. And he went and met him in the mountain of Elohim and he kissed him. Now, Yah spoke to, to Aaron. According to this, Aaron hadn't seen Moses for quite a long time. 
And we know when he was growing up, they were, they were separated growing up. They might have saw each other sometime, but, but, but now they're going to have their, their meeting again. And Yah called him to go and meet him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of Yah, which he had sent him, and all the signs which he had commanded. And Moses and Aaron went on and gathered all the elders of the sons of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which Yah had spoken to Moses. And he did the signs before the people. See, these signs were for Pharaoh, but they were also for the people of Israel. And here it is in verse 31. I have this highlighted. And the people believed. And they heard that Yah had visited the sons of Israel. And that he had uh, seen their affliction. And they bowed and worshipped. So at this point, the people believe. Well, their faith wasn't very strong, as we're going to see, because they're going to go back on their belief and accuse Moses and Aaron of, of doing some evil by taking them out of their comfortable slavery in Egypt. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to see that. But it says, now the Zipporah wasn't here. It says, Moses and Aaron appeared to the people and said this. And that's the end of chapter four. And then we're going to see chapter five tomorrow. And uh, for chapter uh, six, we're only reading the first verse. So we'll do that tomorrow as well, reading the first verse. So that is the scriptures uh, for, for this day. And may Yahweh continue to shine upon you this day. Hallelujah. Thanks, Father Yah, for, for your holy word. And everybody have a blessed, blessed day. Thanks for being here with me. And, uh, shalom, shalom.